Beckman Unleashed podcast number 40. We are live. The Mike Allstott, I believe, was number 40. The Great White Hope. Yes, and also Sean Kemp. Oh, Sean Kemp. That's Seattle. I Super like that. Oh, yeah. yeah, I knew you'd let me slide with the basketball reference. Oh, there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sean Kemp was a stud. Yeah, that was like NBA Jam days. Yeah. If you remember that. Yeah. For our viewers at home. Yep. All right. Here's what we're going to do. What are uh, we doing today? I'm going to, we're going to talk about recall. Uh, but I'm going to start off with, um, I was thinking about my philosophy on dog training or dog ownership, I guess. I'm going to try to keep it short and sweet and give it to these guys, which is a big ass deal. I think if you trust me for me to be able to go this age, do this, this age, do this, this age, do this. You most likely have a great dog. Boom. You're out the door living your life. So you're going to talk about dog training on the podcast today? Yeah. For okay. a little bit, at least. And then the recall, is that dog, get into dog recall or, or people recall? Dog recall. Okay, cool. So I heard this guy. Let me, I I heard a guy on a short say something about raising children that was so right on, so short, succinct, and I'd never heard it. And I was like, that's genius. And I'm going to follow that. And then I've often thought, I made a video two years ago about sort of raising your dog. And it's got a ton of views and it was pretty damn simple. And I've kind of always gone like, it's really almost, is it too simple? Was My, it the age appropriateness video or no? The age appropriateness video. Oh yeah. And people that. still comment on it all the time. They love it. They're like, oh my God, this is great. And I was like, but it's so, it's so damn simple. But I'm like, it kind of is. And then I saw this video of this guy, of which I'm going to tell you what he said. And I was like, that's so damn simple and 100% right. It's amazing I've gone this long in my life with having three kids and never heard it. It's weird that I can remember where I was on the day that we dropped that age appropriateness video. It's oh, weird really? how certain things like that yeah, happen. That so. is weird. So, okay. So what did the guy say? What, what Ready? Happened? Yeah. He said, here's what you got to do. And listen to me, people. I don't know who the guy was. If you have children. Sorry to the guy who were stealing his stuff. Yeah. I'm sorry if you don't have children. So he goes, this is mainly sports minded. Okay. Academics would be different, but they they the lines are blurred a little bit like this mm -hmm. this can apply a lot of things he goes from zero to seven years old your child should do strictly gymnastics from seven to 12 years old your child should do every sport and from like 12 13 your child should focus on a sport One and more i was time, like sorry that's exactly freaking right doing zero. doing gymnastics up to what seven seven and then what, then every, every sport, every after sport that? for four, five years, pick a bunch of sports, do them all. And then like refine yourself to like one. Maybe yeah. Two. I would argue, I'd argue too, especially if they translate well, I'd say to baseball yeah. and you want to be a quarterback. Okay. Like an Antonio soccer or and even basketball or something, soccer and football to yeah. a degree. But like, if you're going to do like tennis and surfing, it's like, okay, they're going to both take a tremendous amount of time. They really don't help each other. Like that would be a little different, but bro, he's so right. So I have many kids. I don't, I don't, I don't think it's bragging if you're telling the truth. It can be. Can, can it? it? Yes. Okay. Go ahead and brag. Go ahead. Uh, I'm going to brag for a minute. I coach my son in football. He's an exceptional football player from, from day one. He just, he saw the field differently. There's something about him that it's just different when you watch him. I could, we could actually bring up a highlight. It's if you from want. his uh, mother and her. Could be from his mother. Could be from his father, who was also a good football player. Who knows? My daughter, high level surfer. One of the best in the country. You could argue there ain't that many girls surfing. I mean, there's a lot, but there's not as many as playing soccer. Mm -hmm. I get it. Um, but the proof's in the pudding. Okay. So I, I know a little bit about this kid raising athletic thing that, that we're doing. And then we have another small one. Dude, zero to seven doing gymnastics is absolutely freaking right. It's like body strength, weird strength, mm. um, simplicity. Like get your kid at baseball at seven, you're going to watch nine children that don't understand the concept of what the hell is happening and are confused for a long time. I've seen it. Seven year olds play baseball. It's the kids are like, wait, what? When do I run to first? Because it's like no other sport. Baseball, yeah. like it's hockey. A, it's kind of goofy. Basketball, yeah. football, stalker. They're sort of this get from here to there. You cross this line or this ball goes into this. Like they're, they're similar concepts. Baseball is a very strange concept very not structured. to you watching this it's just a weird thing for a young brain it's like yeah we're hitting the ball 
pitching and hitting. Okay, now I'm running over there and I have to stop when I hit there. Whereas like uh, basketball or soccer, you just go and it's like, we're always trying to score here. We're always trying to prevent them from going here. You can like tell them for two minutes and then send them out. You they, really can. Yeah. Now, are they going to do it well? Are they going to double dribble? Yes, they're going to do all that stuff, but essentially put the ball in the hoop. Uh, football, run past this line. Yeah. Like either simple concepts or baseball is actually to a young grade, not a simple concept. Even tennis, you hit the, you hit the ball over the net and there's another person. Hit there's the a lot of rules in tennis. There are rules, but those are rules. Like the whole, the sport itself is simple. Whereas baseball to a young brain is not simple for their young brain. I've seen it. You know, I always thought baseball was boring to play. Me too. I would I like, like sit there in the walk. dugout and I'd be like, we'd be up to bat. And I'm like, when do I get to bat? And they're like, you don't get to like, yeah. you got to wait. It's boring to watch, except you get the seats we get, which by Poncho's yes. owner, he gives us seats directly behind home plate at Padres games. And you've gone with me and we're just right off the TV camera. So if you watch a Padres game, I'll get like four games a year. Yeah. And then sometimes I'll, I'll move over two seats and I'll sit there. The you food see, you can is see Joel so Beckman good. And they get All free, free. food, um, free drinks. As far as the gymnastics go, I dig into it a little bit because um, we will get to dogs. A lot of the lifting like stuff is there or like any calisthenic stuff is all uh basically gymnastics based and i was watching yeah. this guy last night actually <clears throat> and it was funny I, I thought you'd like this like he talks about doing a muscle up do you know what a muscle up is is it like the um um um, um crossfit kind of thing uh kind of but okay. basically it's a strict pull up where you yeah. pull up and then you push down to oh get, yeah my son right? does those he's like watch me do a muscle up so those are muscles up, muscle yeah. up right so then the guy was saying then there's a kip up right and that that's where you see a lot of the gymna gymnasts they'll do that they'll kick their legs up and then they fly up onto the bar and he was like but they're not the same he's like you are doing a kip up this is a muscle up it's a muscle right, up right, right. you're not using your muscle you're kipping right. and he's like it's okay it's okay to do it do something different he's like but we have words for things for a reason and right. the, you know what i mean i thought oh that's interesting but i think as far as the the kids Gymnastics, go yeah. like yeah developing the athleticism early on with less, I mean, there's still structure of course, but like yeah. they have tumbling, they have yeah. balance beams, they have, um, what do you yeah. call it? Rings and yeah, that's uh, it, parallel bars. I'm telling you, this guy nailed it and I've never heard it, bro. And you can't even give him credit. No, we don't no who clue who this guy is. When did you I'll hear probably this? never hear this again. I don't know, a few days ago. Mm. Now I will get to dogs. Hey, listen, most of the people watching this, I think are parents. Okay. So then the multi-sport from seven to 14 as genius as the gymnastics under seven bro so my my kids have done every single sport especially crews mm -hmm. every sport we did they were on swim team then he did baseball for a time he did soccer they both did tennis they did jujitsu he did football now he does football name a sport i mean not a random sport they really they did a little golf but not much badminton. they we had a badminton thing but they oh, really well. didn't do it I, I mean how many sports are there there's more but he did, they did a lot of sports and what it does is it just, it just develops the muscles differently and the brain differently. And then you start to go, man, this kid can hit a baseball or this kid can catch a football, which are two very different skills. Well, this kid has leg dexterity or, you know, for soccer, yeah. this, this kid has the super high competitiveness, um, for, well, every sport needs that. But the only, the only thing I would disagree, disagree with yeah. on that and because, but I still think if you had to pick two, like to get into right away, you well, do gymnastics and then either wrestling or jujitsu. If you're into that thing, just because these kids that start jujitsu at like four and five that stick with it by the time they're 10, like it's hard to catch up to them because what about burnout? So good. What about burnout? Uh, Burnout's a real thing for a lot of sports, especially not team sports. I think it just, I think part of it though, they're, Burnout, I think, comes a lot with competition. And so it's like, how do you manage that competition? And then if you're developing the confidence and then think about being 11 and being really good at wrestling or jujitsu. Right. You're all and stoked. then you're like, yeah, then people come into the gym and you're like, you yeah. become a leader in a way. So I don't think you're wrong, but I, yeah, I think ultimately if you're pushing them too hard, you're going to pay the price. Yeah. And you always got to be careful of that. Yeah. I mean, Big time. my, my oldest like got burned out with tennis. Cause she was going so hardcore yeah. that like, she was just like taking a, so Tennis taking is a break off dude. No, I mean, she was in private and stuff like that and, and school and all that to go know? high level. There's just so many girls and boys that, that if, if someone can just play five hours a day and you're playing three, like it, it's tough. No. And then even with the privates, it's like having one private a week, they're kind of like that. The coach is like, yeah, that's like not really enough yeah. at the highest level. And then it, it ultimately what the way we changed it, which I think is, you know, pat myself on the back from a parenting per perspective, right? Is that 
I'm like, so do you want to go to college and play, um, play tennis in college? And she was like, no. And I'm like, like, all right, well, hold on. Like, yeah, let's, let's pump the brakes here. If this is not part of your vision and your mission of what you're trying to do with your life, then if you're just trying to have fun in high school, then let's, let's take it down a notch. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So multi-sports for the, those, those periods of time are exactly what we did for some weird reason. That's just what, what the path we followed. And it really was good for both the kids. I would disagree a bit on choosing a sport at 12 or 13. And I'm pretty sure that's what he said. I think you should at least do two. I think you should always have a fighting sport in there and then your main sport. That's, that's like what a, I'm thinking. Get through junior high school type of thing or what? <clears throat> what? Just to get through junior high school type of thing. And freaking high school. Yeah. And then go live in New York city. You're, you're going to use it. Yeah. No, that's, you're, and you need to know how to fight either it's jujitsu or kickboxing or boxing or wrestling. You pick up, you pick one of them. And you always do that in addition to if you want to go high level, right? Varsity in high school, college, then, then, then you go high level with your main sport. Yeah. And I mean, kind of the way we're going, even within dogs, right? Like I hate to bring it up with dogs here. So early on, but but, but if you talk about like, like, you know, there's burnout, like there's competitions with dogs, there's all types of ways that you can, or I'm going to go out there and I'm going to teach my dog all these tricks or i'm going to walk every day like you've got to set some type of balance in your life or and that's what i've always tried to do is like what are repeatable actions i can do what and you've heard me say this too a million times like what are the sustainable ways we can set our week up to oh, where yeah. every week we're hitting this activity yeah, yeah, yeah. and we're so it's like over not the course too of hard a year, yeah because yeah. it's not sustainable and then yeah. it's like you end up pushing too hard burning out and then you <clears> do nothing for six months and then you're like we would have done way better if we just met every week yeah i know yeah. 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 So c- get to my dog philosophy. Yeah. Are you want to do that before recall? Yeah. Because okay. that's along this lines, right? I, I have this simple approach to raising a dog in the same way that guy had a simple approach to raising children to be really good at athletics. No, oh, so there was a reason that you brought that up. There was. Okay. And then we went off on parenting, which I love to talk about. Um, all right. Raising a dog, my age appropriateness, just do this. Just do this. Don't, don't, don't do more than this. Don't do less than this. Just do this. You get the dog at eight weeks old. Now rescue dog, you get it two years old is a different story. We can talk about that. If you have any questions about that, about that one later, uh, eight weeks to four months. Uh, so that'd be uh, 16 weeks. It's comfort and potty training. Make them feel loved and warm and they can sleep in your bed and they can, uh, mouth you and they can do whatever, kind of whatever the hell they want, but you need to do potty training, which is reinforcing them when they go outside with treats, when they go outside chicken, and then um, not letting them go inside. So that'd be crates or tethered to you or just taking them outside a lot. So you limit their ability to go inside and you reinforce their going in the correct spot, which generally would be outside or on potty pads. That's zero. That's eight weeks to um, uh, four, eight, 12, 16 weeks. That's mm. that. Okay. 16 weeks, which would be four months, let's say to seven months. That's the nipping and jumping. And there's uh, um, some moderate socialization and desensitization there. Zero to four months, my first period. Um, I don't care if they go outside or not. I mean, they should go in the backyard. They should see the wind in the trees. They should start desensitizing things. They don't need to be, meet a bunch of dogs. Meeting a bunch of dogs is antithetical to safety. What do you mean by nipping? Nipping. Like why? Well, are you saying you need to stop them at four months when they start nipping? Or? No, they are going to nip and then you can do something about it. I mean, seven months you can start to be like, hey, this is not okay. But like it's, you know, you just redirect them. So at four months, they have to nip. They have these crazy teeth. So instead of going, knock this off to their little puppy brain, that's like, what the, I don't even understand why you're being mad at me right now, dude. Mm -hmm. It's like getting mad at a baby. You just go, hey, how about this rope toy instead? How about we go on a walk instead? How about we go outside and run around instead? You redirect. It's a lot of redirection. Yeah. If something is bad, right, or you don't want to happen, nipping, but their brain can't handle the consequence or you going no or something, then redirection is always your tool. You just go, instead of that, which I know you have to do and your little brain's telling you to do it, do this, nip on this, okay? Redirection is a great so tool So when like, your wife wants you to do the dishes, you just come up with some new thing that you bring up to the table or no? Yes, 
that's a way to do Does that it. Work? It can work. Okay. You go, you go. She goes, will you do the dishes, please? And you go, hey, look, there's a blimp yeah. or something. I don't know. And then, they get and then she's like, oh, and then she forgets. And then you dip out the back door or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, I don't know why I thought of a blimp as um, a redirection tool, but that would be a pretty cool thing to see a blimp. Whenever you see a blimp, what do you That's do? That's from Bill and Ted's On the Excellent five, Adventure. You go, a freaking the blimp. Did and everyone in the car and... freaks out. I don't remember the movie. Mm -mm. You don't remember that with Keanu Reeves? No, I remember the movie. I don't remember yeah. the blimp. He's like, look, it's a good year blimp. And then he takes off. I just did that perfectly. That's a, Maybe that's where you got it from. You just There's no remember. way I got it from that. Oh, maybe okay. the, maybe my brain, back yeah. of my brain. That's true. So I looked out your window and I saw the clouds and I thought of it. On our last podcast, there was a rainbow when we were talking to Garrett. I don't know if you saw that. No, I didn't. What are you drinking, by the way? Celsius. Because I get all jacked up for the podcast. Look at this. All jacked up. Is that up. healthy for you or not? No, it, I'm going to die. Is it This bad? will kill you. What is in it? Horribleness. Can I see it? In, in 20 years, they're going to be like, celsius and red bull they're gonna um be like yeah if you drink those you're gonna die it's like it's like smoking carbonated but they don't water citric acid taurine okay so it's like a upper it's gonna kill you Veronis. it's gonna kill me cool. zero Z um that phase is like nipping and jumping and you don't really punish them for stuff they're adolescents they're they're younger than adolescents. they're little kids right you get them exercise you start to get them out in the world a little more you go on walks Seven months to like a year is the fear period. So you have to understand, and it doesn't always come out as fear. This already is more complicated than that. Is that like a thing. teenager stage? For yeah, them? it is. Yeah. So it's it similar is. to kids. It's almost like, like it's like right when they hit teenage, like 12 years old for, for a kid. And so um, they're, they're, they will get tripped out. They'll see things, they'll get tripped out, but it always it doesn't always come out in fear. Sometimes it, it comes out in just... um their brain is just somewhere else. Hmm. Okay. It's called a fear period. It's, it's actually bad wording. Um, and you got to get them out a lot. Got to get them out. You got to fight through this. Gotta face the fear. Oh my God. My dog's crazy. Yeah. 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 That's why you go to home Depot. And that's why you go to a law box. Cause you'll come out at the end of that fear period, seven months to a year, you'll come out of it and they will be 10 times better. If you, if you pull back during that time, because it's hard, cause it is hard. Mm -hmm. They come out of the fear period. And they're worse. You got to like fight through it. Like do a lot of things with them. I'm not saying go to a dog park, but Thanks. like a lot of walks. Hey, if you want them to be good at the beach, you got to go to the beach at that time. If you want to be good at malls, you got to take them to malls. So it's the same thing. Like you do like a calendar. Like, okay, on Tuesdays we go here. And on Saturdays we go here. That'd be good. You don't go crazy. Yeah. You do it every day. Yeah. Just little things. You'll see at this time, they walk outside at nine months old and, and they've been outside a hundred times before that. But at nine months old, the day they turn my nine months, they'll be a little windy and they'll be like, what the hell? And you're like, what, what happened? Just they just hit the fear period did Prince overnight. Have that? No. And Bosco, Prince, did he? Have, no, Prince essentially had no fear period. Well, his brain was somewhere else on a walk. It was like, he was a nightmare on a walk, but he never got fearful. That's why I say it's, it's a bad wording. I'll tell you, Bosco, who many of you guys know, <clears throat> he had three incidents and I, I was going to bring this up to Garrett, but I didn't. Bosco got scared three times. I can remember him. An escalator we took him to Fashion Valley Mall nice. and he was like, what? You want me to go up this thing? He wasn't ready for it. Bro, who's ready for and an Garrett escalator? Had that. Garrett does a video about yeah, that. Uh, no dog's ready for an escalator. The dog's like, those are moving. Yeah, he had a German Shepherd going up it, yeah. didn't he? Yeah, and the German Shepherd did exactly what Bosco did. I think I made Bosco go. But the other thing was a ho hotel stairs that had no backs. The, there was oh. no, right? It was just cement stairs. I don't know how I feel about those things. Yeah, you know? the dog is like, wait a minute. I, can't, I can see through those stairs. Yeah, this makes no safe. sense. <clears throat> and the last thing was we were at a playground and Bosco saw, you know, those springs with like a chipmunk that yeah, the kids yeah, and they sit on back and forth. Bosco, it wasn't even moving. <clears throat> Bosco saw one of those. He was, and he freaked the hell out. Did you think it was a big chipmunk or something? He likes it's such bad he? painting. Or... He kills him. Well, yeah. he squirrels. It's such Didn't bad. Did you adopt a squirrel? Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. We tried yeah, to we save, tried it, to save right? it and then it died. Um, but uh, those, he freaked out and he's like, wouldn't go up to it. And then he got close to it and he was like jumping all around and like tripped out by that thing. Those are the three balking times my and prince just didn't have one really he never got scared of anything ever but he was on walks he was like his brain is somewhere else 
Like it was hard to control Prince on a walk at nine yeah, months and old. It said that Prince and Bosco never met. Yeah, they yeah. They were like a year apart. Yeah. So they would have liked I each did, other. I know. Bosco would have been like, I'm the boss. And Prince would have been like, okay. We've talked about this in, in uh, a couple of podcasts too, but um really ought to think about getting I know a puppy again. I need a red female. And I keep saying it on here, like every 10 podcasts, I'll mention it. No one ever goes, oh, I have a red female we can breed. Yeah, no one think, ever says it. I think we have two calls to action oh, on we, this podcast. We have, we have calls, by the way, voicemail. We have two calls to action, though. We've got, do you have a red Doberman female. that is female? Yeah, the male isn't going to work in this case. Uh, but if you have two or if you have a, a red Doberman female, let us know. Yes. And, um, you know. We yeah. would like to have a next generation of princes yep. that are going to help we need uh, it. save dogs' lives. The mm -hmm. second call to action is creating the next generation of dog trainers, which you've mentioned in the past, which is essentially the Beckman coaching program in which um, we're getting a lot of emails about. We're going to teach people. It's going to be all online. You can do it from anywhere in the world. We're going to have tutorials. We, our goal, sorry to cut you off, our goal is to make the next generation of Beckman dog trainers, which you don't have to be just like me, but I'm going to teach you how to be like me. We're going to maybe helper better. dog, hopefully better. A helper dog, social media, how to do social media, how to use your facility, even if your facility is an apartment. Okay. Well, we're going to try to get you out of that apartment. Yeah. Because we believe, I'm not trying to recreate the wheel. I'm not going to say, yeah, it's fine. Okay. You want to be, you want to do it like Will, Will Atherton, Tom Davis, Dog Dad. Okay, yeah, you do that. I'll, I'm going to show. No, my system is my system. Yeah. Now, you don't have to have a facility like mine. You don't have to have a dog like mine. But we got to be working towards that way because my system works because of the facility, sort of, because I have a place that dogs can meet through a fence because I have prints and you got to have your own dog. It can be small. He doesn't have to be dominant, but you have to have a well-trained dog when we'll get him hopefully a little bit like Prince. And I'm going to show you the principles that I use, all of it. Yeah. And the principles that apply to the dog training, they also apply to the social media, the discipline, the attitude to keep posting. Even when it doesn't feel like it's working, you don't give up. You continue showing up. Even when you have a podcast and people are complaining that you're not talking about dogs, you say, I don't care. And you yeah. just keep showing up. And sure enough, people, you create a pod in the process. And we, we are going to have, it's going to be, we're doing this with integrity. Everything we do and everything you do, leaving the school during the school is going to be with integrity. And what does that mean? It means we're going to do the right thing by dogs and people, even when it's hard. Yeah. And okay. even when it's not profitable or not the most profitable thing to do. Even if it's not the most profitable thing to do. Yeah. Because the easiest way it would be like, hey, let's just tell. But somebody, our goal is for you to be profitable. Let's just tell Trust somebody, me. give us $10,000 up front. Like there's a lot of different <clears throat> types of uh, things like that where they do that. Whereas like, Ours no, is you can't. Month. Yeah, you can't. You can't teach someone to do to be what you you are in a one thing. It's an ongoing process. It's you know what I mean? There's so much to it. And to think that like one video could just get someone at that or, level. That's just not fair. Or to one say. course. This is month to month. Yeah. Where it's going to be privates with me, privates with Eric about business and social media, and then privates with me separate, private talks, uh, a lot of things. And the apartment thing you bring up is interesting too, because here's the thing is like, what you won't hear from us is, hey, like, we're going to take you from an apartment to a mansion, like the way a lot of this social media BS goes on, where they're like over promising and under delivering. We don't know what your financial trajectory is going to be. But the thing is, we do know that Joel has went to the school of hard knocks probably his whole life, but you know, he's learned all of these lessons. And then uh, just like I've learned a lot of the business lessons and you've learned the board and train lessons and all these other different lessons, we've learned them all. And it's like, let's just tell them what the hell we're doing. And Hey, they might not like all of it. They might go, I think I could do yeah. it better. Hey, and you know what, if you think you can do something better, yeah, knock yourself out. But this is the way that worked. And this is the way that we built it. But yeah, you know, if you can get out of that apartment through the program, hey, even better. Yeah. But and I mean, and we know. could run the numbers and say, listen, you're going to be able to pay your rent on this new house with a yard with three more sessions. And I believe you can very easily get three more sessions a month. 
Yeah. And that pays your rent on the new place. Yeah. Having a, having a facility and not even just a facility, yeah. having a yard, right. Is a yeah. huge advantage. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, you can't train other people's dogs. One thing too, before we, we jump off this topic, it is interesting to think that like, sometimes people will say they are a dog trainer. And what they say is like, what they mean is like, I have a dog and I train my dog. I'm a dog trainer. You see this in the emails for the, I see it. Well, no, no, no. Just in general, like p- even people on oh. social media that they're, oh. they're a dog trainer, oh. but there's a level of like a dog, like I'm a dog trainer or I'm a cat trainer. Cause I train a cat versus Joel I... actually trains everyone's dog all of the time, not your own dog. And that's it. <laughs> there's a difference there. Yeah. The volume. I didn't know people. I didn't know people really say they're a dog trainer and they're not a dog trainer. No, they if are. They're training their own dog. Yeah, they're not a dog trainer. Someone's got to pay you to be a dog trainer. Yeah. Okay. They're not you a professional. Making money. They're not a professional dog trainer. Like you're a yeah. professional dog trainer. Oh, professional, I guess would be the word. Yeah. You get paid to do it. Yeah. You're not even a dog trainer though. Yeah. Someone has to pay you to be a dog trainer. You can't call yourself a dog trainer. I guess you could do it for free if you wanted to, and if you were really big into it. But here. So last thing I'd say yeah, you could. is if anyone on you here shouldn't. is interested, if any of the pod is interested yeah. in um, the program, which will be coming soon, it is Beckman Ventures at Gmail. Yeah. Yeah. And you'd have to send a letter of what Not your background letter, is or your saying, email, yeah. what you uh, what your experience is with dogs and why you'd want to be a part of the program. Yeah. Did I get that right? Yeah. Maybe you'll drop it in the um, description box with yeah. the email. And I'm that... emailing everybody back. Are you? Yeah. It's getting a little out of hand. So we have, we share the inbox. So like yeah. we see them flying through and I'm like, all so over the world. I don't have to do that. And people are like, Oh, I'm in Hungary. Can I do it? Yeah. Yeah. We might have an annual thing. Like we've come here. Yeah. We flipped we it though, not. because initially it was like all hands on in person. And we were like, oh. all these people are all across the country or, or across the world. And we're like, that's not going to work. Yeah. And then also even like the time zones are a challenge too. Not just oh, America, but just in like well for the live difficult. stuff it is, yeah, yeah. So, but but at the end of the day, if you, if you're willing to do something, you got to make it work. Yeah, we'll make it work. Everyone you know, make it work. So, I'm yeah. gonna do a thing where I go through a, a, a you know little click something that says scheduling, and I'm gonna show you all the questions I ask people. I'm gonna explain why mm-hmm. could save you from getting mauled by a simple question before they show up. That that um. It helps you not get get bit, even though you would have never thought of it. It's going to yeah. be really A to Z, I think. How important is it to not get bit as a trainer? It's about the most important thing. Um, yeah. Do you ever talk? I mean, you know, we always, we actually, we have not been selling like, oh, hey, you know, you should be a dog trainer and do this. Like people are, are, are definitely like, hey, I already am a dog trainer or I want to be one. But like with those gnarly videos, the uh, break breaking point, flex like the top videos like that that like stresses you out yeah like at the highest level of now granted you don't have to sit there and just take a bunch of you know gnarly dogo argentinos you know conic corsos but like at the highest level like you're walking a tight rope with what you're doing yeah it's it's it 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 has it does stress me out i think you would be not a normal person if it didn't Mm mm-hmm um, I see dog daddy do these things. I think he's got glasses on. Oftentimes this is a guess and I could be wrong because you can see a lot in the eyes, yeah. right? Like he can't, when I mean, the dog's in a muzzle, I get it. He's confident. I get it. Susan Malone was confident. I was confident, but it's like, it, it's very stressful. There are times when you have to hide and I don't mean his glasses. I mean, me, you have to hide your stress. You yeah. just, you have to shove it down yeah. deep inside. And you've told me that too, even like yeah. the relaxing of your shoulders when yeah. you're dealing with the, um, because you don't want the dog to know that you're shook or anything like that when you yeah. are, and you have dealt with that, but you also have a very good system and we won't give all that system away, but people who've seen your videos have seen the way that you don't, you know, well, why is that dog in a muzzle? It's like, yeah. well, it's very specific. Reason. Well, if the dog has a history of biting people and he's coming to my house, yeah. And I haven't trained him yet. I might want to throw the old muzzle on him and yeah. stuff. So stuff that might not be obvious to some people is going to really help him. I, think. I did a weird thing. I didn't use muzzles for years. This is before I was videotaping anything. Mm-hmm. And it was good and bad, right? I think I got lucky that no dog got hurt and I didn't get hurt. I think I got actually, I think there was luck involved. 
that for years without using muzzles and working aggressive dogs. So that's bad. So this program, you're going to cut the line. I'm going to say freaking use a muzzle and here's how to use it. And here's all the different situations. What to here. look for to take it off. What to look like for that? to take it off. Yeah, yeah, there's nuance to it. But it did a good thing for me too, is I got really skilled. I believe like I'd let a do aggressive dog meet another dog with no muzzle. You have to be so ready and so exact and be able to read dogs and use your helper dog. So no one gets hurt when there's no muzzle. You have to be really good. So it taught me to be really good. But like, I just don't think it's worth it yeah. for anyone else. It's like rock it climbing. It's like rock climbing without With a, no rope. It's like it's like yeah. I mean, you're you gonna get good. It. Yeah, you're gonna get good, and you're probably gonna make good decisions on the rocks that you climb. But it's like, hey, don't do it. What you know, you and that's the whole thing about the consistency. You do things enough times, something is gonna break. Something bad is gonna happen. So like, don't put yourself in a yeah. position where you do yeah. that. And so that's kind of I think the end of that. But anyways, so I want to get back to what you were talking about. About, year. about so we went into seven months. We kind of finished the seven wow, we're months. Out of the, or we're, the fear we're, we're the at fear a year. seven to twelve, right? We're at a year. Okay, what happens at a year? We're over all the nonsense. Yeah. Okay. It flips at that point, right? It flips. It's like you're You're an adult. No, you're 18 now. You're 18. Yeah. You're you're, you're still doing little kid stuff? Yeah. It's like no, hey, no, 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 no. Yeah. Like, oh well, well dad, I don't want to go um I don't want to go to school and I don't want to work. Yeah. I don't care, bro. You're like, you, okay, you're, you can do that, but you got to get out. Yeah. You can do that as a homeless person. Yeah. I'm not saying I would say that to my kid, but that that's, there could be a better example of that. But like, yeah, we're, we're over it, dude. That, that recall your dog doesn't do now. You've got to be a normal person. The dog, if the dog's in the middle of meeting another dog and he just turned one year old, don't ask the recall. You ain't going to get it. But man, he's just cruising around your yard but and you say attitude. come in a year and he doesn't come. Go grab his little butt, bring him back. We're not requesting things yeah, anymore. But, but it is that the attitude of the owner switches out a year. I think so. It becomes, all right, you're an adult now. Yeah. You're a pain in the butt. Now we're going to start dealing with yeah. it. Like I've adult. been a good, I've been great been to you shepherd. for a year. I have trained you. I have loved you. I have done all these things Joel said. And I, you're like a normal person. You're like, I believe in these things and I've mm. done them. And I've redirected you when you try to bite me. And I never got mad at you because you were just a little baby. And now you ain't a little baby anymore. And I've done all the nice stuff. And now you're an adult and it's, we're over it. Now, I'm not saying it shifts overnight, but you, you're kind you, of saying it does though. You kind of, but, but in nine months, you start to kind of make the shift a little bit. And then at a year, definitely at a year and a half, the shift is made. Yeah. And you're, um, you're, you're hardcore obedience so guy. Do, so do you think about to get a little philosophical here with the the fear period? So do you think that the fear period that kind of is like adolescence or like teenage years, do you think that that the reason there's that potential fear or angst or whatever you want to call it is because they're really going from baby to adult, right? Yeah, and probably. they have to pass through. And so it's like that is scary, right? Like I guess so. Change is generally change. scary, right? Like you realize, like, um, just like you would be with a being a a father, right? Like once you're an actual father, you're like, you don't, you can't run home and cry to your mom. Now it, in yeah. theory you can, but there's a point where now you go like, oh, there was, I, you know, I'm a dad. There was generations before me and they didn't have that escape valve or whatever. They had to actually show up and there's no escape valve now either though. What do you mean? For a dad? You're like generations before there was no escape valve. You think we have an escape valve? I don't know. No, I don't oh. think we have one. You know, I'm saying once you become a dad. Oh, yeah. Like once you become a dad, you are now, there's no one else to run to. Like, right. And even if you can run to somebody, you still have to show up because like mm. there's only, there's that one dad. So like, are you going to do it or are you not? Like, and you even see this with younger kids that ends up, they have kids and stuff. And it's like, well, and it usually will grow you up pretty quick, right? Mm. You're either going to, it's like, you're going to either adjust or you're going to break because you have to yeah right yeah did i hit you with this or like i'm trying to follow and only my i didn't have a dad around yeah, okay. so maybe there's no sort of escape i guess i could escape back to my mommy but like i moved out at like 19 like i don't know if i ever but did you had feel that when i became a dad no maybe it was before that then did i feel what like did you feel like oh shit it's on me now like did you feel like it was on me when i moved out at 19 but did you feel even before that, like, hmm. like, I don't know, were you like leaning and not to get too like Sigmund Freudish on you, but oh, like yeah. when you were That's like good. living with your mom, 
did you feel like okay like at 15 or 16 or whatever like i'm kind of the man of the house now and like oh. i'm you know what i mean i don't know i had a stepdad oh okay at that time that i couldn't really count on okay so he kind of like so he didn't fill the void no where was your mind at that time at 15 16, 16 17 yeah. i was with my friends all the time so and we gone. were a little pack and we were together all the time all the time but you were gone i was gone you just go hey i'm I, rolling out and Bye, we'd mom. hang at my we'd yeah yeah oh yeah and i didn't do good in school Neither did I. and i didn't care Not for a while um yeah yeah. So maybe that shaped me, but like you're, you're, you're like me. I mean, you're not, not, not much different than me, I, but there is a period of, there is the catcher in the right thing we talked about in the other episode where it's like, you're going from, you're going from this childhood essentially, but I, I kind of love it. Like I love the fact that, that eventually, and I got, I was talking to somebody about the pressure because people are like, Hey, I'm, I'm stressed out. Like I got a lot going on. I got three kids. I got a wife. I got companies i got stressful i got full-time jobs i got all this type of stuff and um oh i know i remember who i was talking to and um because the guy was saying oh well, he doesn't have a car and i go he doesn't have a car i mean he's in his 50s or 60s i go he doesn't have a car yeah and he goes yeah he's about. he's a bit he's a bit odd and i go the guy who's all stressed out no 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 this is a different guy oh okay, but i was thinking it. about the car thing and i and i go oh well that's weird i go i go we got people counting on us. Like there's no, like not having a car. Yeah. Like we got to figure it out. Like you can't just be like, okay, well now I'm just not ha having a car anymore. Oh yeah. Of course not. I'm not going to do that. Like you're like, Hey, or you can't even be like, Hey, I'm just not going to work anymore. I'm done. Oh yeah. No, there's, there's, there's no not doing anything anymore. Yeah. Every single little thing needs to get done. That's what I've been going through this last week, bro. Like we're going, I'm going to Mexico with my daughter in Mexico. the smack middle of craziness and moving appointments and coaching football and now leaving and doing a podcast and doing a school and building and a like, program. Yeah. I, and, and to his credit or not his credit, my daughter's surf coach, like, let's get, we, let's get it done. He's like, He's, which i'm like holy mackerel dude like i got a lot to do like you're killing me you're killing me but he's kind of the ultimate get it done guy yeah and i'd like honestly i know this is not like i mean um i don't want to say acceptable but like i know he has no business being on this podcast but part of me thinks like at the end of a podcast like let's say we do an hour about dogs get the give you know give them the red meat so to speak yeah. and then have him oh, on as a in. guest have oh, yeah. him come in as a guest so what i know about him i've never met him we've yeah. talked about meeting him yeah but like you always like oh you'd like this guy but i've seen him i follow him on instagram i know he's just like this is my daughter's hardcore like he's doing that atg workout stuff like he's doing this militant. underwater yeah uh, i saw torpedo, that too torpedo, torpedo league where they play this gnarly sport we do jujitsu underwater where you're trying to throw a thing uh a uh, a and missile, whatever the hell he? it's called. He's in his fifties, right? He's like fifty-four, maybe. Yeah, but he's in great shape. Yeah, he's in great shape. His, his but mentally, daughter, his he's kids are amazing. Sir, hardcore. He's just a hardcore dude. He's yeah. Mentally, I love hardcore dudes. Yeah, and and it's it's good to have people like that in your life, but they mm -hmm. make your life harder, stressful. Yeah, yeah. And so you, so he basically tells you out of the blue, "Hey, it's a surfing. Swell coming. Yeah, so like." He's like he's like uh, Bodhi from Point Break. He's like, hey, yeah, that's how these surfers are. He's like, hey, he's like, it's going off. Time to go. We gotta go to Mexico for a week. I'm like, uh, bro. And it, so there's a storm coming in to Mexico. A, a swell. Not a, a not a full on part. storm, but can, can we bring you say, up my daughter's where it Instagram is and no? show show a video of this? I I just if think you it's want fun. To. Um, I don't know if you can. You might have to re log in. Yeah. So we don't have to. We I don't care. Don't it's your to. show. It's it's fun i mean i think people like it my daughter hates it when i do this I'm like, well you've oh, already I talked about you on a live she's like what i showed a video of you oh i don't know how to log in oh uh, well then Instagram. so i can try one more thing <laughs> we can't do it yeah yeah no it, it, so so you'd like to have him on the podcast what the heck we talk about would you he he's like just a he's a he's a he's a fucking he's a get it done guy he, i like and he take he does a lot of, he's got five kids i just think Bro, it's like five the, kids the podcast would enjoy and I, i'd enjoy too because i've never met him but i but just seeing 
people that are like doing the like hard stuff and he's that guy. Yeah. And I just see him. I saw his workouts and I'm like, this guy is getting, you know, 55, he's 54, whatever. He's getting after it. That's right. And I like, I need more of that in my life. That's right. I feel like, like I do that too, but he's I'm like, like, he's like these guys you watch, not David Goggins, but ish. Yeah. Like David Goggins light. And it's like, bro, but I don't think he'd have a problem training his dog. He had two crazy dogs. Did they he? were out of their minds, but he was like, he tried things. He's just, he would do things like so over the top. They were like, dogs. but I'm sure they were a little worried about it, but they were, they were a little worried about it, Yeah, but they were really dumb dogs. They were these okay. Frenchies, oh, they were yeah. French bulldogs. And they were the dumbest dog. I went to his house and like helped them. And like, they really were out of their minds. That's so funny. Yeah. yeah so anyway, so, so basically you have to leave. It's the least, it's like the worst time in the history of times to leave. It's about the worst time. Yeah. And so everything's out of control. Have to yeah. change everything. Yeah, I got to deal with it. Yeah. And that's. And hopefully that's something, you know, last thing I'll do on the kind of just the, the program thing is hopefully some of this can be conveyed. You know, even when I was doing the recording on how to do a thumbnail, I know you haven't seen this yet, but I did like a recording on like, you sent me um, pictures to do for a thumbnail. I put all, I recorded the whole thing. As this I was is for the school. He's, yeah. He's recording how to make a thumbnail. Yeah. You don't have to use your brain. Yeah. If, the, if you're in the school. Just do them like he does them. Not exactly. Yeah. You're going to have a different picture. Do them like he does them. Yeah. Our, our thumbnails are as good as the thumbnails are on any dog. Try to say Mr. Yeah. Beast, like probably has better ones. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's AI generated ones. Yeah. There's people that have but like, crazy. If stuff. you make them, just do it like he does it. But and the, boom, check it off the list. Yeah. The attitude was for like, Beckman coaching hey, program. like this is just how we do it. And it's like, and then we're thinking like, oh, let's tell them all the principles. And then we're like thinking, no, like let's just show them exactly so they know. And the reason I the reason I bring that up is because I think I mentioned like, hey, it's Sunday morning. But then I was also thinking in my head, like this Sunday morning thing, like I'm working all week. And it's like, yeah, am I making I'm making a thumbnail every Sunday morning for how long? Like, yeah, a few years or whatever, yeah, like, yeah. like every morning. So and it doesn't mean that you have to work and be a crazy maniac. But like if you want to be a dog trainer or no, if you want to be a successful dog trainer. Yes. Like if you can't handle that. If you can't like wake up, kids screaming, sit down, knock out ninety minutes of work, and like, or more, and like get it done here, you, dude, yeah. you're not gonna make it. Here's the thing, let's say you have three kids, they're all in sports. You have a job, okay? Mm -hmm. Three kids, they're all they're, you're gonna be in sports soon. Three kids are in sports. We have a job. We have side businesses or other businesses mm -hmm. that are growing. We have all this stuff. Let's say you're that person or you're the mom you're the mom and the leader of the house with a husband or without a husband. Let's just say you're, they're the leader of the house, whatever leader that, pack, yeah. whatever that means. Here's the thing you got to do. Okay. Here's my advice, my parenting advice. And this is, goes along with dogs. This goes along with my whole thing. Um, you have to take everybody's, your job has to be to make the decisions for the family because there will be four, potentially you have two kids and a wife or a husband and two kids. There are four people that want to possibly do four different things. They, many of them they are all do. thinking about what they want to do. Yeah. This one wants to do this. This one wants to do this. When there's a decision to be made, the, the 12 year old is not thinking about the family. They're thinking about themselves. <laughs> the wife is possibly not thinking about the family. Potentially. <laughs> the husband, not is in our cases, not, but we're just saying, in we're general. just saying in general, it's possible. There has to be a person who their whole goal is to not think about themselves and to think about the best for the members of the family, possibly including the best for their dog in there as well. And then make a decision and be ready to have four people be so angry at them for that decision. That's that's decision making. But that's and true it leadership. Is hard. And that is true leadership. leadership and it is, is it's taken me years to learn it. I ain't perfect at it. I do not like when I make a decision and my wife gets mad at me, but there's been enough good decisions made over the years that now she's like, okay, we'll just do that. Even and, and then you have to be ready for her to be mad at you and you have to be ready for her. Then it's most likely if you Throw made the right face. decision. Yeah. If you made the wrong decision, she's getting mad just like you might with her. But um, you hopefully have to be in the 70% range because then she's going to basically give on the decision making. If you're better at it, if she's better at it, she's doing it. Yeah. 
And but you might four people might be mad at you. It's the Michael Jordan with the bit with the basketball in the last second. Yeah. Who are you going to give it to? Right. Yeah. That's a pretty uh, deep thing to think about, especially as it relates to like a true leader in a family is thinking. And also to you, you think about and I feel like I feel honored in a lot of ways that in my own family, I've started to take on like what I would say is I don't know if we've ever talked about this, about the patriarch thing. I think yeah. I've talked to you in person. I think we talked about it as well, but like where we have this, um, you know, kind of uh, extended family, right? With uncles and cousins and stuff yeah. like that. And it's kind of like, I mean, I could easily just be like, hey, we're not going to, we're not hanging with you guys. We're not doing whatever. But like, there's a larger family idea and like, whether it's convenient or not for me or my family, like you have to play that game and be, put the family ahead in yeah. a lot of ways. And so like, the more you have, um, good, I guess not a, like your heart's in the right place with the family and, and where you want to be. Like people will know like, Hey, Joel's not just trying to like weasel his way to have everyone at his house. Cause it's easy for him. Like he's thinking about what's best. So like you, but the, you have oh, to do it though. Like you, you have, mean have someone at your uh, house or like whatever, whatever it is that you need to coordinate with family. That's the point. It's God, like, those are like, I don't mean to cut you off and I don't mean to minimize what you're saying. Those are such small decisions though. Like, like what about, what about, are your kids going to homeschool? Are you going to have another child? Are you going to move out of the city? Like, uh, like these big decisions where your, where your wife or your kids are like, I'm not leaving high school. And you're like, you got it. You're, you're homeschooling now. And they're like, my life is ruined. And you're like, I know, but this is best. And they are you doing you. this or something. Or? No, no, no. Okay. I'm just, these are giant decisions. Yeah. No, I just, and mean, I'm not minimizing I'm just, your small family. No, I'm just saying like, if you decide like, I'm not like, we're not going to my uncles or we're not going to my cousins for Thanksgiving dinner. Like oh, that's yeah. kind of the end of that family. Right. Like if you decide like, we're just not going to do that during Christmas or Thanksgiving yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Like you just grow apart. Like that is that's, true. It's that's the beginning okay. stages of something. So you have to think like, what's the benefits and values of like the cousins interacting and that type of stuff. And like that, that's true. You know, in a lot of times like the patriarch, but like what we've talked about in the past is like the patriarch isn't always the oldest man. Right. Right. It could be the leader and like uh, the lady who cuts my hair, her nephew is like the patriarch in their family and they live overseas and she's like yeah everyone's like this is the guy like right, he is the leader right. of the family and i think everyone we want everyone in the pod to be like that and i think a lot of them are but like you know and you can follow too you can lead follower get out of the way right yeah there needs to be followers yeah not everyone can be a leader what about with dog training though like do you can you be a good dog trainer and be like a follower um in our program or just a general dog trainer can be a follower. Sure. You, in the you program. can do fits and downs. You could train puppies. How about in the program? In the puppies. In our program. That sounds like a serious, I mean, you're going to pull in the big bucks if you're training little puppies. There's a need for puppy training, but uh, yeah, you're not going to pull in the big bucks. Um, who the hell is going to train a bunch of money? Aggressive dog. You should be charging five X an aggressive dog. What you do a puppy. Five X. 10 X. Eric thinks 10 X. And he's probably That's a right. whole different world. Yeah. Like so a, a pit bull against like a, a little imagine? baby. Uh, Anyone could train a puppy. Um, yeah, in our program, we're we're we're, we're going to talk about leadership for sure. Yeah, I mean, you need to be a leader. Okay, I like so, the people. I like the people talk. I hope the pod likes it. I this has been the most fascinating thing. Just like that decision making part that we just kind of went over, um, is like and this kind of like there's nobody left to protect you. I know we've talked about this yeah. a few times. Yeah. Uh, I was actually joking around um, with, with my, uh, my manager. I was like, we're, we're in a little like uh, meeting and, and we we're just joking around about like, you know, like he was saying like, Oh, I don't even leave my door lock or I don't even lock my door. And I was like, really? I go, I lock all my doors before I go to bed. I've got cameras, right? Yeah. I've got everything I need. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm like, but Hey, everyone to each his own everyone has their own philosophy of how they live their life yeah he's probably got a lot more money than you and lives in a whole different you know gated community maybe i think it's more a mindset oh I, you know what i mean i think that's some of it but anyways um but anyways so okay so we turn... yeah i mean i've grown into this thing like i have a seven-year-old a 14 year old i've been married 18 17 years like you should know how long like, you've been married for uh, 
bro. There's too many numbers. If you ask my youngest's birthday, like it, it'll take me a minute. It does not What's just come to my. Call? What's your? I don't know, bro. Okay. They, we don't. I I I can think about it. You got to give me a minute. It's a lot of birthdays in you my start head. Start thinking like okay. Birthdays, anniversaries. Do you know the year he was born? Uh, what year is it right now? Twenty four. Twenty five. Born in twenty twenty five right now. No, it's not. It's twenty four. Uh, he was born in uh, um um two thousand and sixteen, maybe seventeen. So I have a question for you. Okay. Shoot. You know I don't currently have a dog, right? Yes. Do you think if I had a dog and like we did this kind of recall thing as an example like i would go get my dog did you yeah. think like i would have a problem i with think that? you would do exactly what i have done and you would be a mini me i would copy you yeah it'd be fun like, you've watched sign all up. these videos and done this like why wouldn't you last week when you told me i don't yeah. get a, an honorary black belt you know how like you get the, the an, honorary an, degree in our program yeah you know i was like yeah well you'll give me a black belt right or a yeah. red belt you're like no yeah I was like, bro, I don't get a black belt, like an honorary one. You're like, no, no. So I was like, maybe you I'm going to say, nothing. screw this. I'm going to join it and I'm going to earn my black belt. <laughs> that'd be good. Like, yeah, that'd be a good idea. That'd be funny. Okay. So we're at a year. We're at a year. We're not taking we're over, any nonsense. We're trying, not taking, uh, you still exercise your dog. You get him around a bunch of dogs. Oh, in the um, nine to 12, nine to 12 months thing, I think you should be around a lot of dogs because they got a lot of energy. Your dog's had your dog is like got to do a lot of stuff and wrestling and playing is a really good thing to do in that fear period or at, around that age. Playing See, with dogs in good Caesar, dogs. obviously, it was he was big on exercise discipline. Oh yeah, and he was affection. right. You're on board with that. Yeah, that's, he was right. I mean, that's like three core. Like, it need they need the affection. Yeah, got to give them the affection, right? Yeah, that's like part of having he a dog. He was smart. How he had these like sayings. Dude, like I just train dogs and I have like no sayings like or I'll just say we'll do this all day and then people make videos about it. But like he he marketed branded himself. Well, he also so it was like exercise something like affection. He was fully right. Then he's got one that's like a dog is like an animal, a dog and then it's breed like fully right. Like I don't even ever think we about talked about that. that on the last podcast about yeah. about like the dog like Garrett's like, hey, I mean, the dog is an animal. Yeah, he like, talked let's about not that. forget that yeah. it's not it's it's not necessarily a wild animal. It's an animal. And then he's like, we're animals. And then he brought up all this, which we are. Stuff. Animals. I know people don't like to talk about that, though. Yeah. So anything else I need to know after the year, yeah, a year and a half, they're essentially who they are. Yeah, it's super. You said this on the last part or a few podcasts. Ago, right. It's super tough to it's start changing. Like, what is it? The old dog new tricks thing? Yeah. And people don't get this. They go, they call me it. They're like, my dog's aggressive to dogs. He's three years old. I need to socialize him. That ship has sailed. Yeah. I'm not saying we can't get your dog better with dogs, but don't use the word socialization. Socialization yeah. is for puppies. Yeah. You, you socialize. We are retraining and you hear them go, oh, that seems harder. Yeah, it is harder. You socialize children. You socialize <laughs> yeah. puppies. You don't socialize. Yeah grandparents but that's exactly what they say they go i need to socialize my five-year-old dog what you're five years <laughs> your dog's a middle-aged man yeah, yeah it's a little late for that i just had his call an hour ago with that and they said that it was a five-year-old dog and they said i think they said socialization i didn't it was a call so i wasn't like hard on him you were like what are you talking like, about shut up that's I the dumbest thing i've ever heard i didn't do that where i usually do say it tell him to shut up you don't do that no i'm kidding no that's actually super funny um Okay. So a year and a half, they're kind of set. You can train them. You, but, but their personalities, their personality doesn't, you can train them, but they are who they are. Do they love dogs? Do they hate dogs? If they hate dogs, it's going to be hard to get them to love dogs. Isn't it weird that at four months, if they hate dogs, I can get them to love dogs. You say like a uh, 18 month old dog is who they are. Right. But mm -hmm. like kids and adults, like if you look at like, you know, I know your daughter, you know, yeah, 14. six years old. She was kind of the same. That's true too. At six as, you know, not the exact same and they change, but they but kind they of don't are who they are too. four months dogs. Yeah. No, you're right. It's you're weird. Right. There is, there is a lot of fundamental changes. I think you can do with a young dog more than fundamentally changing maybe a kid, but it, I guess fundamentally, you're not really changing many organisms, genes, and who they are is who they are, but you can change them quite a bit. I would say dogs and kids 
maybe change wouldn't be the word. You can you can guide them, you can you can direct them. Yeah, changing them's tough. Yeah, that's a weird concept about like you can't, yeah, you can't really. I mean, they are who they are. I mean, people yeah. are who they are, but, but but then there's also the idea of like changing genes. Like there's supposedly like, and I don't know how, how true this is. People in the comments can let us know, but like, okay, like doing intense workout and like having these like routines and disciplines in your life yeah. and you do it for like 10 years. Imagine like doing the hardest stuff possible for 10 years. Will change genes. Like it like turns on genes it and does. stuff like that. I like, think I've heard this. And, I've heard that. I mean, you know. I've always wondered that. Like you're, if you have kids and you're like really out of shape, your first kids, you're in shape. And then 10 years later, you have another kid and you're out of shape. What genes are passed down? Like I've never, but there's like expressing genes and they'll, they'll, they'll No, change. I don't think it passes down. Oh. I think it's, I think there's like, there's the genes, like the DNA that gets passed on. And then, but there, there's actually like genes can turn on and That's off. Like I it's mean. the expression of genes That's within I mean. the person. So like, if you start, you know, just like, even if you think about like over being overweight, adding weight like to somebody is going to cause other physiological changes like maybe more estrogen and things like that going through it so then it is actually going to change you physio physiologically and then change your baby i don't think it changes the baby really i don't oh. i mean i think the, I the know. dna sequence is like Different fairly written genes? um oh, that's interesting. i don't think yeah i think it's like well, I think it's like there's genes and genes expression. We're way out of our wheelhouse on this yeah. gene. On but the, the pod human, will probably the fact human check genome us. thing. I think uh, oh, off grid dogs will probably like chime in with some. There's professionals who I don't think even have their heads fully. I mean, they think they do, but 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 they're still they don't know everything because like, not everything can be known. Not everything can be known. That is true. <laughs> Is that not a bold statement? We should say that's like the title of the podcast is like, not, not everything can be known. That's a genius. I've never heard that. You just made it up. I think so. We should put on a shirt. We should say, we will along with do this shit. At, what is it? Do this shit at night. Do not everything night. can be known. How's your, your commute, man? My what? Your commute with the, oh. the, the uh, what do you call it? The traffic jam that you've been screaming at people. Oh, I, I think I changed the course of events. <laughs> there's no more. There's no more stuff maybe they've been doing it literally the day i yelled do this shit at night they they stopped i haven't seen i any. called the county supervisor i told him no. knock it off i think i think my yelling might have done the trick which was the point that's why you did it you weren't mean trying i wasn't to be mean. trying to be mean to a crossing guard by any means trust me crossing guard or whatever the guy is he had a full like a stop thing. and slow he had thing? a freaking thing that went up and down in the road like it was a hardcore like a deal like, a like they didn't even use the stopper guy they literally, because people were so mad, they had to use a thing oh, that wow. came down. He hit a button like and they built, then he level. would go up into the woods because people were yelling. But I found him. He yelled at him. Do this shit at night. He like went into the little area, he, like the woods, and I, I went by and I yelled at him. I don't think the, the pod had to can really stopped. see your face when you do that. Like he went into the woods after him. Look, <laughs> I mean, it's classic. Yeah, is it? Yeah, no, that's really yeah. good. So you're not having any problems with and have you gotten into any skirmishes with homeless, homeless people, people, stuff like that? No, no issues. Have you yelled at your wife? Here's what happened after that homeless Don't touch my keyboard, fight. Please. I'm sorry. After that homeless fight where I helped a man being attacked by a homeless person, I really, I really got a jolt of like society and what's going. It really hit home with me. My kids play 20 feet from where this homeless guy attacked a guy. Mm -hmm. It really hit home because if you notice all the incidents which I've talked about on the podcast literally that week yeah. has, was after that homeless incident that and was I, the like, um I, I i all the incidents that i've had which that was the domino that was the beginning of the dominoes where i just said no one's gonna police society so that's when i like got out of my car me and it, we talked about this you're you policing upon. it you have to police it you're i have to it, police yeah. it you have to police it because no, we talked about it months ago no one's coming to help you uh yeah. they could break into your house tonight the cops may come 20 minutes later. That's legit. They may not show up. And this a commenter after we said that was like, they were a dispatcher, yeah. uh, the commenter. And they go, yeah, if the person just came in and broke in your house and left, like we won't act like it's a big deal. I'm not positive they come with any quickness if someone's in your house. Like I've heard, I this. swear to God. I've so heard no one's coming, dude. Fact. So you got to deal with in society and make the change you want or not and be a little, a little P word. You make the choice. I have to make that choice. You have to make that choice.
I've actually heard this, so I'm not saying anyone do this, but I heard this from a law enforcement person yep. basically said, if you say somebody's like kicking your door down, like, yeah, they're, they're interested. Like for they're, sure. They're I, I bet they're interested. He says, if they, you know, if they hear somebody's kicking my door down, I think they have a gun. They're very interested. He's like, they're at your house. I believe so, that. So maybe just he was that. saying, like, I'm not, he told me this. So this you, mm, I told you what happened like 12, advice, 14 years. He just actually. said, Hey, I'm not telling you to do this. I'm just telling you if they right. think someone's coming in with guns, it's like all hands on deck. So we're not telling you to do that. I'm just saying. Problem is cops show up. They're ready to roll. And then if you're like pop out of the bushes or something like. Don't pop out of the bush. Like don't probably. pop out of the bushes. Yeah. Like just like people that have, um, I've always thought about this too with like, concealed carry and all that type of stuff is like like i i've grown up around firearms and stuff like that so like i like people don't realize like you can't just go shooting stuff like you have to know like what's behind you like you oh, yeah. there's like kids or i mean there's you know what i mean you have yeah. to be super careful and then even if you what if you do what if someone does try to break into your house like the police come they don't know who you are they don't know yeah. what you, what the homeowner looks like and you're coming out there with a gun, they're gonna be like, whoa, bro. Like, you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Like yeah. That's you have saying. to really think about what you're doing, like situational awareness and stuff is super important, yeah. you know? Um, so anyway, so that, I just thought that was yeah, magical. Yeah. So I basically made a change after that homeless thing. And I was just like, I'm not, I'm not gonna like, I, I, I can't put up with a lot in society because the people are gonna have to change society. I feel like a lot politicians of aren't doing it. The cops aren't gonna change it. Your kids aren't going to change it. They're too damn young. I feel like there's a lot of, um, it's about like, about, it's all about the unacceptable behaviors, unacceptable. Like you always talk about and just saying like, Hey, like it's okay. Like there's times where somebody flips you the bird and you go, yeah, like whatever, bro, that's fine. Keep on rolling down the road. For but there's sure. times where somebody's trying to take advantage of you or, or pushing, uh, in a way, you know, even with family stuff where like people like, um, you know, you know, we're always going to be uh, defensive over our, our, our kids, but there's times where we're like, hey, I don't Bro. need to escalate this higher than it is. Like, no, your kid's probably a little shithead. Yeah. Like, don't go defending kids, your I mean, kid all the time because just like you shouldn't, they're not, probably freaking wrong. Just like with your dog. Don't always defend your dog. Don't defend your dog. It's like, hey, dogs can be, you say yeah. this all the time. Yeah. Dogs can be um, little rude. So here, yeah. I have actually taken this to heart. Uh, you know, that one YouTuber that I listen to a lot uh the crazy guy the prison guy oh like, yeah west watson yeah why can't we say his name i don't know i just I he's from know. san diego yeah well but if he doesn't um what if he sees this if he doesn't we love him yeah but i mean well he doesn't um i mean he has about the same subscribers as yeah you do. so but i'm like hey we gotta have him on yeah that'd be funny he's um, from oceanside yeah so oh, that's yeah, where yeah. i got in the fight with the homeless person yeah so here's the thing though you is how like, stoked would we be to have west watson on it'd be hilarious like so the, he would take up this whole room we'd have to get a new room he's Dude, giant I, I would i'd have to do like a full-on workout and just get pumped just to yeah like and then he'd still be like you're a little like, weak yeah he wouldn't say that but he'd yeah. think that oh he would know it he'd be like bro i'm bigger than both of you guys combined i know he's jacked but here's the thing so he does like a lot of motivational stuff and then when he does it like hardcore that's where he's like all oh, like you know discipline hardcore every day morning routine blah blah, blah. and i've been yeah. doing morning routine for ever so like this isn't I something i picked up but when i hear people i follow and i listen to him and he's big on the motivation on especially like you know just becoming a better person whatever so um but if i listen to him too much right yeah then he starts to rub off a little bit oh totally right? he says oh, like you're oh. just listening to him talk is that bad like, well as an example so I, like a while back i was taking my daughter to tennis and when you take her to tennis um you it's you drive in and out there's like you know one lane each way and then there's a circular driveway right okay. and then that's how you swing around you drop either at the pool or at the tennis court and then you take off and people you know what people like to pick up their kid right in front they don't like to swing around right. they like to sit there and park and so after the you know of course i'm i'm spiritual giant i just go oh, okay whatever let me yeah let me roll around and and let yeah. me do a three to four 10 point turn so You're that like, I, can... I only clean my side of the street. I'm a spiritual. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I, so I back out and then I, I do all this like, you know, ninja moves so that I can get out of the thing because they want to sit there and wait 10 minutes for their kid. 
And so the, the whole circular driveway doesn't work. Okay. And then I go maybe listening to a little bit too much Wes and I go, yeah. all right, I roll up and I, you know, I got a pretty like a lifted foreigner, whatever. So I like roll up. I mean, it's usually fairly, higher. fairly yeah. high, but I don't care who it is. Anyways, I start rolling up and I'm like, is there, is there a kid in this car? There's not a kid in this car. I got, there, it's just a, a parent just waiting. They're going to, so now everyone has to go around. So I'm just like beep. And then they sit there and I'm just like, they, I see them look up. It's like they roll next one. You know, it's like, and just hit them with the horn yeah, and, and then they, they just start moving. Right. And I'm like, and then sometimes like, I'll, they always seem to move, but like, sometimes I'm like, and I don't want to be like Joel where I'm like attacking people on the street, but I'm like, I'm like, Hey, you're not the only one here, bro. Like we can't turn. Yeah. We have 15 cars that can't turn around because Good job. you're a selfish bastard. Good job. Right. Yes. So I'm like, there's those points in life where you have to yes. be like the policing thing you're talking about. Yes. You have to be like, Hey, I'm going to clear this out here. Yep. And I'm not allowing any more a holism. And I just help society. Right. Yep. And a guy might get out and bash your window with a crowbar. Yeah. And but that's, that's the risk you're willing to take. I'm not saying I am always willing to take it. You might want to take a glance in that mirror and go, okay, who's in that car? But you should do exactly what that's you did. the hill you want to die on though. Yeah. You know, cause yeah. sometimes you're like, you hey, what's, who do you want to be? If the guy gets out of the car, you, go, you know, maybe it's Wes Watson gets out of the car and yeah. he's, you know, six foot. He doesn't want to go back to prison though. But you, yeah, true. But you also go, you go, Hey, you go, bro. What are you doing? Yeah. And you might have to get out and you, you might, say, yeah, Hey, you say, Hey bro, stuff. this is a turning thing. It's not yeah. for where we park. Yeah. And then it's like, Thank Hey, you. from your being rude, not me. I'm just letting you know to move on because in what the thing he says about it, that actually like kind of stole in my mind is he was basically saying, if everyone did what you do, would everything still work or would like society be crumbled and broken? Like if yeah. everyone parked and blocked so that no one yeah. else can get out like yeah the society wouldn't function so when someone wants to be a special person and do it their own way or double park or block people in you're like hey why are you double parking bro get out of here yeah it's like oh no i was just going running no i don't care bro i don't care why you were doing that yeah don't double park don't block me in yeah I'll only be in for a minute. Yeah. It's enough turning a blind eye or turning the other cheek. Turning the other cheek. Turn, that's a it's Jesus enough, thing. right? Yes. You're Jesus over that. had it all right the whole time. No, Jesus, wrong. No. Oh. <laughs> You're going against what Jesus said. <laughs> okay. I am. But Jesus did like flip a table over. He, like Jesus was fiery. I know. We got it. Like that's a bit of a like a kind of inconsistency, right? It is. Like the people who know are like Jesus was not some chill dude. He's he about it. Flipped the table. That was the that was the money changers thing. Yeah, which is he, the old and he was bankers. in like the Jewish, yeah, like the synagogue, and he's like, he was in front F of it, this, bro, and he's like flipping tables. He, but yeah, they're money changers, so they're basically the bankers of. Yeah, those he didn't days. like. He didn't like it. They would take the money, and it was almost like like foreign exchange. Like they would take a profit, and they would do that, and they were yeah. doing it right in front of the synagogue, yeah. and he was just like tosses it. Like yeah, that must dude. have like think about it. Even if you're not a believer, okay, let's just say you're just just your every day MTV watching kid and you know, from, from our age. Right. And you're like, Hey, like, I don't believe in any of this stuff. Yeah. You kind of have to believe that that table got flipped over. And you kind of have to believe that there was a dude named Jesus cruising around, but also that he flipped a table because like flipping a table is a very specific thing. Like <laughs> someone flipped a table at some point, right? They didn't that, just like, make that whole thing up. Yeah. Like, you know, you hear these stories and sometimes you're like, that happened when I was a kid. Yeah. When I was a kid, I literally was so I just did not believe anything religious. And I was like, I believed it was all made up. I was like, nothing said in this book is real. Like At there was age? no Jesus. I don't know. Up until yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I was like, it's all made up. Like I was told it was or I believed it was or it was such nonsense. I just assumed it was. Then I got to an age where I was like, it's actually it happened pretty quickly, honestly. And I was like, it was like, okay, there probably was a dude named Jesus running around doing amazing things. Then the next leap is, was he the son of God? And that's the leap that's an interesting leap. Because really I actually believe leap. Jesus, my friend writes, wrote a book about this. And he, it's an amazing book. And you have he a friend says, that wrote a book? Yeah. Wow. Very, the smartest guy I know. The best human being. I, I thought know. I was. No. It, this guy is my middle, my Leon's child is middle named after him. He wrote a book and it's basically like, it's, it's a lot of things, but he, and I wouldn't say he's, a, he's not a Christian, but he believes Jesus was essentially the best human being to ever live, but that Jesus was not the son of God, but 
there's all these old texts that kind of are kind of saying Jesus was saying we're all the son of God. And it just got construed and yeah. I think he made up the theory. I don't think no, he no. would claim he did. I don't think I don't know. I mean, I know But 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 he, he Jesus was a man who did miracles, but he was essentially saying we're all the son of God. And it just kind of got weirdly construed to he's the only son of God, but that's not what Jesus said. And that Jesus was essentially the greatest human being to ever live and did do these things, but was he the son of God? And I find that very interesting and it's kind of blasphemy. I get it. I really do get it. No, I mean, it is you, blasphemy. If you like, so if you read the Bible and obviously there's a bunch of different And you've types read of it Bibles. so many times. No, but I have read like the gospels and stuff. I have read this stuff. So like, really? Yeah. And then they'd even have it where Jesus is, lettering or like the words were red if they if it was him speaking and then it would be black if it was everyone else like, okay so if you have like matthew or something then it's yeah, like yeah, yeah. his tail or not tail his yeah um whatever you call it account of his yeah. interaction with yeah. jesus or whatever so like but if you listen to what was said by jesus it's like they like try to incriminate him and be like hey did you know that like um, right they would try to do they that. would try to say like oh you're saying that you are the son of god and then he would give them like a like right, a, a roundabout quote. answer. No, he would give him like a quote out of the Bible, like out of the Old Testament, because that's oh. what was there at the time, right? So he would give a quote that is like, "We are sons of God" or whatever it was. And right. So, so like they would try to catch him, but he'd be like, "I know this better than all of you guys do." And so they were just trying. They had an yeah, but you grind. could argue he was saying that to get around the blasphemy that he was saying, or you could say that's actually what he believed. Like maybe he wasn't, because all this stuff got messed up in the church where they like go like. Back in the day, they're like, we're going to write this Bible. And they're like, we're going to leave all this other stuff out. We're going to leave. They left a lot out that they didn't want in there. I don't know if they wrote the Bible. No, they didn't write it, but they compiled it. Yeah, it's like a series. But they, of... they left stuff out. They found all these scrolls. I don't know if it's the Dead Sea Scrolls. The Dead I think sea it's scrolls. The other, these other things. And they go, no, that doesn't fit the narrative. I think it was the Jesus, Son of God thing. They go, no, no, that doesn't fit. We're not putting that in. I mean, imagine the church like, you know, 1500 years ago or whatever. They it was not the it was not the most honest bunch of European. Well, there's two sides, right? So doing this, I was raised Catholic. Again, Europe. I shouldn't be sharing this, but I was raised Catholic. So like basically Catholicism, like the first church, like essentially would be yeah, it's all Catholicism. Bunch of... But then in I think what was it 1100 or whatever when they had like the Protestants with uh, Martin Luther, right, and right, they right. basically were like, hey, you guys are doing too much like stuff. Too much like tradition and church and like which they are non stuff yeah yeah and that type of stuff and he's like we want to like just focus on what was written yeah kind of thing and so anyways uh, but one thing I, I listened to this um, really really cool um, it's called like the Great Courses and it was called the Wisdom of History it was like a really long course about history and it started and it went from I think the Roman Empire all the way up and it talked I just about watched Jesus. Uh, Napoleon by the way that's a good movie go ahead it talked about Jesus and and he was saying you know, and then there was, you know, Jesus. And he goes, he goes, uh, you know, I mean, he says like from a historical aspect, there's historical accounts. He goes, we don't really have any reason to believe that he didn't exist. Totally. And I thought that was an interesting way of saying it. Like, why wouldn't he? But then if you get into like the Jordan Peterson stuff, he starts saying, he say? well, he starts saying like, like more from a um, Carl Jung, like kind of like, uh, what, is it, what do they call it? Um, uh, archetype type of thing where he's mm -hmm. like, basically like jesus is like he is the embodiment of the perfect person yes and yet still gets like sacrificed <laughs> you know what i mean like it's true. the best you could do For it's sure. like which almost is kind of like you'll get yeah, fed you're kind to the of wolves. screwed yeah you like, want to you want to go against the grain you're gonna die i mean think about how true that <laughs> is in general about how like that society doesn't want no. like just like the dogs like what if a dog is doing something different than the rest of the pack? But what if the dog is actually right? Like maybe there's impending doom coming and it knows it. Th those other dogs don't want to hear that. Just the way your peers don't want to hear that. Yeah. No one wants. And that's like with dog daddy, right? Like, like dog daddy came in and was doing something different and not to say you or Garrett or any of these guys are like giving him a hard time. Not at all. But like the industry is like somebody that like, get, yeah, get him out of here. Oh, He's, that's exactly what happened. You cannot, you need to do it. And you need to do it our way. Yeah. Right? Yeah. How do we get on the Jesus talk, talk? I don't know. It's great, though. You like it? Oh, yeah. I wonder what people are going to think about this. Not that I care I about it. I think they'll love it. You do? Yeah. I Who think... doesn't have an opinion on Jesus? 
I mean, I try to take a very like um open-minded approach to any like spiritual yeah, text or con- con- concepts and like go in and it doesn't matter what the religion is but but even you know having been raised in it what i didn't like is when i was young i would have a lot of questions about faith that they were like telling me like oh yeah it doesn't matter like shut yeah. up and catholicism's just kind of jacked up i mean there's only one it kind of you is. only insulted a billion people on the but planet earth right now like, it is it, i like... mean there's something really cool though about the traditions too like so That's do you know what about the guy mass? who wrote the book says do you know what about mass do you know what mass is or not really i don't want to no. put you on the spot but so like so when you go to church i'm a christian i'm when, not a Catholic. when you go to church um like there's this thing called mass i've it's, heard of it and so you go to mass so it's like it's not the same as um like your buddy's church right where it's like very much rock concert ish right like it's oh, very miles mcpherson no, not him. Oh, that's that's the guy you should watch. The bald guy. <laughs> Your friend. Oh, yeah. 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 So like that type of church where it's more yeah. like rock concert-ish yeah. and stuff like that. But there's also like a sermon and there's yeah. like, they're, they're hit. it goes hard. Well, this is, you can go to a mass. It's going to be very similar, even if it's in a different language. Like they're very similar. Yeah. That's and then true. it's similar in Italy and so forth. So that's you what my there. friend said. He's like, he likes the tradition of it. But mass is like a celebration. And the idea oh. is that it's the, it's the, it basically the true and this is what they're saying this is like turning the wafer right yeah yeah, yeah. and no, i know that. the wine yeah. into the blood of christ yeah yeah and so it's actually a celebration so christians mass, do that too. so mass is a celebration I mean, I yeah in which they're commemorating the blood you know yeah, yeah the blood the bread and the blood right yeah the bread and the wine whatever bread and the wine Right. So that's so that's what they're doing there. And then after they do the but they still have a little sermon, a little short one, and they have other things they sing. It's all like by calendar and stuff, right? Okay. But you go in there and then at the end, you know, everyone gets their yeah, their way. I do that. You do this? I just don't do it in Catholic the Catholic way. But you don't know what the Catholic way is. Yeah, you're telling me it's kind of the same though. Well, what do you do at your place? My norm church. Do you go to church? Y- yeah. 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 We take the wine and we take the wafer and the guy talks and we drink it. Yeah, we do that. Do you drink a lot of it? No, you just drink that. Like how much? Like a thimble full? It's grape juice. It's grape juice. Yeah. It's not real wine. No. Oh. What? You don't know this? Normal churches, they do this with kids. They give them grape juice. Yeah, but a lot of them give them wine in Catholics. Catholic is wine. Yeah, not. No, no one no one does the wine. Catholics in, do. Nor, I know. And some other ones do. But now it's just a mass, a thing you do every month. And they just give you a little thing. Well, it's different because of, of COVID, orange, I think. Of, of grape juice. Because of COVID, they like because you know they would drink after it. They have a gold chalice and they drink after it, yeah. and they would wipe it so off. I'll tell you a story. They won't do that. Anymore. I don't drink. You yeah. know that. You don't. No. no. And they they had the 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 they had at this one church we used to go to. They'd have like the wine, and they had it in this big tray. Did I tell you the story? No. I've told you the story. They had a big tray, and the kids would go through, and it was obvious grape juice. And then they'd also go through, and he would just go like to the wine, like he didn't think yeah. about it. So I go through. I don't drink, and I go. I go, I'm, I'm first watching him do this. And I go, he's, his system is not good. Yeah. He's, he's got he's like, confused. it's like a circular tray and there seems no line of demarcation. And Between I'm just, alcohol and no alcohol. Yeah. The kids and are I'm getting just drunk like, here. But I, and I'm like, okay, I assume he's got a system that I'm yeah. not seeing. And I'm like, you have to go up. I mean, you don't have to. I could have stayed there. Yeah. It's been a little weird. So I get up and I'm like, grape juice. Like, I'm very clear. Like, yeah. bro. Grape juice. Fucking, fucking grape juice. And he yeah. gives me the thing. And I'm like, and I'm like I it. think this is grape juice. And I drank it. And I'm like, that ain't grape juice. That's not grape juice. That's not grape juice. So every time you think that somebody has a good system, you're wrong. Assume they don't. Because remember last time when they, the um, zip line had a system? Yes. And then they did, uh, no, 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 your little no, one no just system. got stuck out there. Yeah, that's very good advice. Yeah. It's like when you're looking at something, I mean, how many times in my People life? I think I, I have this? a good system because they've seen videos like a hundred hours of my system and they literally are like, it has a good system. But if you don't have that video evidence, assume no one has a good system for what they're doing. Yeah, but and, I, and you're, you might get hurt or you might. No, you know. do have a good system. I mean, everything from the, the board and train is a good system. Um, the way that you interact with aggressive dogs is, is a good system. Uh, Prince, that whole system is amazing. What Prince does with the dogs, people see it, right? Like they can, if you watch all of your videos, people go, okay, this guy has a system. That's they're not like I, confused I, about it. Like I wonder, I don't think they are. 
Yeah, I think they know. So like, but what's funny is like you see something and then also you see somebody making a mistake and you're like, like you're not the professional though. It's like the guy's framing a house or something and you're like, hmm. I think that's wrong. And then you're like, but I feel bad because I shouldn't be saying it. And I'm like, mm. is that two by four supposed to be all jacked up like that? And he's like, uh, no, it's not. That's messed. That's an error. And you're like, yeah. okay. So, you know, you don't want to be obnoxious, but you also have to speak up. You have to protect yourself. Like, yeah, you can't assume other people are yeah. always, um, no, no, you really can't, you know, you're, yeah, it's a bad idea. Your house might fall down. Um, yeah. But I mean, that's, that's extreme, but can like I, there could be problems. Can I ask you or talk to you about one thing about the Bible real quick? Yeah. I feel like I'm like knocking on your door. Like what's the name of the people that knock on your door? Uh, can I tell you a, a, a story about Jehovah's yeah. Witness? How did you know I was talking about Jehovah's <laughs> no, Witness? I didn't, but you said knock on the door. I'm so sorry. I had an employee that was a Jehovah's sure. Witness. I don't know what, the, the, I literally know one thing. They knock on doors, but I don't know if they've ever knocked on my door. So, but that's, I've heard that. Then I, I know they don't celebrate birthdays or any holiday. That's probably like, which is a bit like, uh, I, I, I don't get it. And so uh, that's all I knew. So she comes to a, a Christmas party we're having at the facility with her husband. Yeah. Okay. And her husband, I don't know anything about the freaking weird ass religion they've got. So he, I go, do you drink? Like, I don't drink. So I don't think it's a mean thing to ask someone if they drink. Yeah. Right. And I go, Oh, do you, do you drink? Here's beer. If you drink. And he goes, yes, I drink. Like, like it was like, Oh, sorry that I assumed your weird ass like religion. Whoa. Like, you know what I'm saying? You're, like, so you've insulted Catholics and now you've insulted uh, Jehovah's Witnesses. Jehovah's Witness. What, are like, you going to go after the Mormons next or what? I like I don't Mormons. Think, I don't Mormons think they are drink. great. I don't think no, drink. that's my point. Like, they don't drink. It's not like They're some crazy business, leap yeah. to think that Jehovah's Witnesses don't drink, but he was like offended that he thought Jehovah's Witnesses don't drink. I would, I it was would like think... this obvious, uh, I, I offended him mm -hmm. when like it's pretty obvious that shouldn't offend you. Like you have no. this weird religion, like assume people might assume you don't drink. Yeah, no, I think <laughs> it every, was so funny. I think every person who is like deeply devout in the religion, I would always assume they don't drink. Yeah. But, but you're a Catholic. So if you're deeply devout Catholic, but I'm saying drink. like Muslim, but not just Muslims, but like I would kind everyone. of assume you don't because it's, it's like this, it can get to this extreme where you're, you're you're sinning in so many ways when you drink too much but i think any religion would be like you don't drink in excess yeah so every thing in my mind is telling me not to bring up this thing about job do you know who job is yeah he's the guy on um that t that show um arrest and development yeah that's what i was talking no about. no he i know job a little bit so the idea is that like the guy was like a gnarly believer and then I think the devil or somebody basically was like, we're going to test this guy's like, yeah, the, he only, he's only believing because he's getting what he wants. Yeah. Like we're going to take everything from him yeah. and then we'll see. God did that to like zillions of, <laughs> that's everyone. pretty rough, dude, bro. Yeah. God's like, um, yeah, you're going to take your son to this hill. <laughs> like what? No, that's a, uh, I know that's not Job, but that's, um, um, we just read it to our kids. We're reading like the story. It's Isaiah, by the Bible. isn't it? Jacob? No. no, Jacob and Isaiah. And what's the, it's, um, it's Abraham. Like the, yeah, Ab I think it's Abraham. Yeah, I think it's Abraham. What's crazy is there's a whole these these whole splits between like the Abrahamic, which is like Islam and other there's like different yeah. where it splits apart yeah. at the at these different times, which I think is super interesting. The Bible is just like the it's like a great it's a great lessons is is really the it's if you can like believe the Bible, Old and New Testament, I would say it's like freaking believe in God. You should like it. You'll be a better person if you don't think you're the most powerful thing in the world. Have you? And then it's like, it's like believe and like trust, trust in something else but yourself. Then there's all these little stories that, that after that. But the first one is like you, you're not God. And if you, if you believe that there's a higher power bigger, bigger than you and he may test you and you have to still believe he's there, then, then now we're on the right track. What if you don't want to be tested? You know what I mean? You're going to be know. tested. Anyways, I don't No right? one wants to be tested. You're going to be tested anyways. Yeah. I think that's the thing. So um, one thing Sorry, I got a lot I keep of cutting you off. One thing you asked me about Job. Oh, no, no, we're good on that. So oh. the one thing that was the whole point. But so what I was going to say is uh, Jordan Peterson, who we tend to talk a lot about on this podcast, too. He has that biblical series. Have you ever seen that? No, but I've seen him talk a little bit about it. It's pretty awesome the way he talks about the Bible and Jesus his cause he, so the ideas are called the psychological significance of the biblical stories is yeah. the, what it's called. So I listened to probably the first 
15 or 18 or something out of like maybe there's 20. That's awesome. But it was like three hours each. Yeah. And he did such an amazing job. And the funniest thing is the guy I was just talking to you about that is bald that we were just talking about. Oh, our friend. Yeah. yeah. I told him about this. Like whenever it first came out, I was like, hey, check it out. There's this guy. He does this whole series. Yeah. I'm like, you will absolutely love it. What did our friend say? Four years later, he calls you. He comes up to me and he goes, dude. Thank you you need to watch this. And I was like, what is it? And he goes, it's Jordan Peterson. Yeah. It's a biblical stories. Yeah. I just watched it. It is amazing. And I was like, you idiot. Yeah, I told, I told you, you this four years ago. Yeah. And you looked at me like I was crazy. And then you blew me off. Yeah. And well, now you're trying to one. tell me about it when I told you about it. He's the one I, t I said, Hey man, like he was having some rough times in his life. And I said, I won't say what the rough times were, but I was like, you gotta, you, you gotta go to church. That'll help this particular roughness that you were having really and that's why he went to church yeah he thanks me to this wow. day he's like you now saved my now he's hardcore now he's like deep hey can i read a comment yeah and then we got to be done okay check this I out i gotta go so um uh, the, we'll go back but this one i thought was um crazy here um i actually went way back i went back to the very first episode that's pretty cool i went that's back to smart. the first episode and this SDNF, SDNF, I don't okay. know. Uh, so he says, and remember, so this podcast, it happened to be that day was when you had that woman who had the ch small child and you felt like you were like that child. That was our I first think? podcast? I think so. Oh, wow. Um, otherwise, you you shared it. I'll never this. forget that, um, that session. Yeah. So you, you went over that and you said, he says, I'm really impressed by your humanity. I'm a single kid to a single mother. And I feel that very close. So, you know, and basically you were like, hey, this dog is going to hurt your kid potentially. Yes. And that's what, that's what this to is the about. mom, to the mom. And, and, but you were backing up the kid big time. Cause that's yep. like what you felt like. Yep. So this, he, this kid saying he's the same thing, right? When I see great people like you guys, I start wondering <laughs> what is your dark side? What people actually don't like about you? Oh, once I know this, I'll feel more comfortable around you. Not that I'm around you. And then. <laughs> So I actually responded and I just said, just recently today, you responded and I said, ahead. stick around and watch the other 40 podcasts. Yeah, that's what I, think. I said. Definitely, uh, definitely shows not being perfect struggles, family life growing yeah. up, et cetera. Right. So, but I thought, but I was like, Hey, like you don't have a dark side that I know of. I, mean, I don't have a dark side. I mean, we've done things that we haven't talked about on here separately, yeah. but like, there's no dark side to you. There's not a dark no. side to me. I, I think, like, I'm not like, I'm not, I don't like hit my wife. Yeah. Like, and like, not that you on, the, on, on the down least. low. I yeah. don't like, uh, hit my, like, I don't like have some weird perversion yeah. that yeah, no one not, knows about. We're not weirdos. I like, think, I think we do like, we can get angry. We are prone yeah. to anger. Yeah. I mean, like, you can that's see, not really a dark you'll side. get, like, we'll be on. I mean, we've talked probably, I've talked to you more than I've talked to anybody in the last five years, I'd yeah, say, yeah, yeah. right? Just from work and stuff. So we've, talked a lot and i would say that yeah we can both lose it a bit like we don't usually get mad at each other because we're usually like in the same we're in agreement on what we're talking about but you know like our family members can push us and like we could get angry because of that yeah. but it's like we're not getting violent with our family and we're wow. not hurting others and it's no. like and also i feel like both of us believe like in doing the right thing and so yeah. it's like you know, um, but yeah, and but I don't mm. blame this guy, this kid, or, or whoever he is. I don't know if he's an adult now. I don't know what his deal is, but like, I, d hey, I get it, right? Like, you never know. I mean, not to bring That's up like true. some Epstein you stuff, but do. you don't know like who has these. Like, you know what really bothered me was um, uh, Kevin Spacey, and I shouldn't be saying this on the on the podcast. We're gonna get demonetized, and I don't even. Yeah, care. but you don't know if that's true. I don't know. That's I guess you're right. All I know is I heard something about yeah. um, underage stuff. Yeah. And you know what I did, though? Because I love that movie, American Beauty. It's great. Have you seen the movie? I love it. I've seen it a lot. Never watch it again. Never watch anything. That, yep. And so maybe That's I've true. jumped again. Maybe I need to do some research and make sure I'm not wrong about him. Because I thought that that... I thought that American Beauty was like, oh yeah, brilliant. The first season of um, that Netflix show that he, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, geez, yeah, he's, oh, he's uh, House of Cards, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But once I heard bad tales about that, I was like, I will support 
nothing even though i love that movie too like i if i saw it on dvd oh, i'd throw it in the trash with a lot of people not with him though because i don't because he was just on tucker so i, I kind of think maybe he didn't do that stuff really i bro he you like, don't know. I, I, I figured he like crawled away and we never saw him again. He's still in the game. Yeah, Tucker Carlson just interviewed him. It really? was a very strange interview. He's a weird dude. But you you just can't. I'm I'm getting to where, and I'm a little older than you, but in many ways you're wiser than me. But it you can't believe this stuff. You ever see that Dave Chappelle sticks and stones where he talks about Michael Jackson and then he's like, Dick, if he did it, he's like. Well, yeah, okay. Like it's kind of this, like, and then he, and then he's like, I'm a victim blamer, and he's like, and he's like, I kind of don't believe it. Like that's, I, I don't know what you can believe and what you can't believe. I, I guess. Don't yeah, you I mean, agree? Like what? Because people say it. Well, I think happened? the thing about, I think the reason you would be more, but see, I mean, my thought is like, hey, if you are, if there's some real egregious stuff, I'd have to just write you off. But when it comes to somebody I know, I feel like I would be in their corner and like look for the actual, like, let's see the proof here. But if I if I was ever convinced that that person was in fact evil, I mean, I'd have to do but, away with them. Yeah, but you have to convince to be convinced. You'd have to know them. I know a couple of people that have like even been a on, court of law. Oh, they got convicted. That doesn't mean they did it. I had a I had there was a there was a um a murder of a child in this neighborhood. You probably know who it was. Um, this oh, is about yeah. this is about two thousand five ish. Or something. Yeah. I mean, it was on. You could say who it is. I don't want to. Oh, I don't like. Okay, don't go ahead. Go I ahead. didn't like bring this stuff up, but the guy. Then there was one in Escondido. The guy who did it, I actually sold him something at at work. I was an electronics dealer and stuff like yeah. that, and I knew his daughter, and yeah. and I, and um and he'd come in, and I was like, you know, and I so I knew who he You're was. Like, this is a great human being. I, well, no, I didn't think I didn't think anything. I thought he was a, I thought he was a bit of like a stern. Right. a-hole kind of like engineering yeah. kind of guy like that and and but i knew his daughter and and, and whatever and i and the, what those kids probably had to go through like his own kids i yeah. mean horrible right yeah but the guy was the guy turned out to be a monster well yeah he did I it multiple know, times but i know a friend of mine his dad knew him and they'd go to the desert and stuff like this this is the guy was in the court thing like he was yeah, yeah. he was on he was for the defense yeah and that guy went down with his friend and was like no this guy would never do that. He did not do it. Mm -hmm. And like, so we'd be over at the guy's house and he would be like, you know, and that was a big thing at the time. He's like, no, like dude didn't do it, bro. And like, I believe he did. And I think that guy just can't see the truth because it's his boy. Right. right. Like if you ended up killing yeah. like 45 like people, I'd be it. like, I don't think he did. And they're yeah. like, you just are a fool. You know what maybe, I mean? Maybe. Or maybe, oh, 45 is a big number. If it's one and you know me, you could, be like, no, nah, I don't think he did it. And then was like, he did it. And you're like, I mean, no, nah, dude, I knew him. Like, I don't care what you say. After the, I podcast, guess it's like though, DNA and stuff. Is there? Yeah, I mean, there was. And that the thing yeah, is, after true. the podcast, though, I think like people are gonna think you did. Oh, I mean, I yeah, you built it. a reputation on this thing now. <laughs> well, I yell a little bit. I think you're a, a we gotta go. Maniac. I gotta go. Yeah, yeah. No, I think you're right. So, okay, that was absolutely insane. Jesus coming to the, uh, the to the can the thumbnail just be a big Jesus like with the light off of his back with like, the thorns and the crown of thorns yeah like stuff. the whole thing yeah uh, that's great let and us say, know like, in the comments he's too, not we... the son of God just to get clickbait no you're no we'll me. never say that I think we should do I mean my bofa is better a way to end it than that so that's the most clickbaity thing ever that was great all right next week guys love you guys bye.